Welcome back to the PR News Show signature segment. We're still on sea with stories. Now, according to the Indonesian Education, Culture, Research and Technology Ministry, more than 44,000 children dropped out of primary school in 2022. Though the figure is lower compared to last year, this still is not an achievement. Yes, and as a way to solve this issue, the Indonesian government has created several programs such as Kartu Indonesia Pintar to assist with the education fee for those in the lower level. In addition to that, the government also, Indonesian youth have also contributed to develop education in the country. And one of them is the Matahari Kecil community. Let's have a look. Matahari Kecil is a community concerned with education in Indonesia. It has the mission to solve social issues through education by building Sekolah Terbuka or an open school for students from underprivileged families. As of now, Matahari Kecil has more than 2,500 volunteers who teach these students. Now I want to quote a special quote from Nelson Mandela Maria. Yes. He said that education is the most powerful weapon, weapon to, change the world. Use to change yes. the world. Yes, very familiar. Now, yes, in the spirit of National Education Day, which was celebrated on May the 2nd, we'll have a talk about how Matahari Kecil Foundation provides education for the underprivileged children here in Indonesia. And to know more, we now have the founder himself, Yasser Muhammad Chaifo. Hello, Yasser. How Hello, are you? Hello, Yasser. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm really excited to be here because mm -hmm. I really think as, you know, moms of yep. children, yep. education has become such an important part of our yep. lives, thinking about, you know, what our children can benefit from. Yep. And first of all, can you tell us more, though, about Matahari Kecil? What made you decide to establish this foundation and how did you get to establish yep. this foundation? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, basically we are a community base. Mm -hmm. um, so we are focusing on um, education and economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to encourage young generation in Indonesia to be able to contribute directly and making I an see. impact, uh, yeah. you know, to education problem, right? Mm -hmm. So it started like, you know, we are helping, we are developing this free charge of school, mm -hmm. actually. So we're not only, you know, helping the kids, but we are also helping the parents or the family. Ah, so we're helping the family yeah. through economic empowerment. That's so that's the idea. So um, the story was actually started in 2015, like mm -hmm. eight years ago. Yep. So when I was in college and uh, I saw that, um, you know, uh, there are some uh, kids in uh, Bandung City actually. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they were playing uh, and also helping their parents selling something, right? Yep. And it's yep. school hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I coordinate with one of the, you know, the KM at the time in, in, in getting mm -hmm. regency in my, um, you know, area at the time. And also, we are trying to know what happened there. Mm -hmm. yep. And turns out, this, these kids actually uh, shouldn't drop out from elementary schools to general high schools. Okay. Okay. And from that time, there's only like three kids at the time. Yep. Yep. And, and then as simple as, I'm willing to help, as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So the simplest way is actually, I'm trying to register them to one of the, um, you know, um, 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 free charge of school, Sekolah Terbuka at the yep. time, yep. Yep. Uh, called Sekolah Firdaus. Yep. And when we visit Sekolah Firdaus, we talk with the headmaster directly. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we cannot, uh, these kids cannot enroll them. Enroll yeah. them because the school is actually out of quota. I but see. the school's mother say that, hey, I say, one, why don't you create your own school and we can work together yeah. in my, you know, in my area actually. So we started in not three kids, but when we, when we, uh, you know, announced that, hey, we are going to open mm -hmm. the free child schools, there, mm -hmm. there are like ten more. So oh, we started. Oh yeah, yeah. that's students. a really good start. Right? What year yeah. was that? Yeah. Sorry? 2015. What year was that? 2015. Wow. Like eight yeah, years, 2015, ago. Right? years ago. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what, what are the programs available in the first place? And uh, what are the lessons that you taught the children? Right. So our core program is actually voluntary teaching. Okay. So young generation, you know, the one who are currently in college, they can join our voluntary teaching about uh, six months. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. per batch is actually six months, right? Yeah. So they can teach about math you know about uh indonesian language english, english language is uh, pretty much like formal language yeah our mm -hmm. formal education yep. because the school terbuka is actually part of formal education yeah so it's yeah, like yeah, three yeah. years program at yeah. the end of program they will get a certificate actually ah okay so, like voluntary certificate exactly yes no sorry not voluntary no certificate, they will get like the the elementary oh for the students right because the okay, formal okay, okay, education okay. they yeah. will get like yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 but so it's it's for all elementary, junior, and high school, or just elementary? All, only junior high school, because oh, okay. we were helping like thirteen kids. Okay. The one who still drop out from junior as from elementary to junior high school. Oh, okay. Very interesting. So um, as a foundation, 
Uh, how do you manage operational costs when educating mm -hmm. underprivileged mm -hmm. children? Because I understand that, okay, you have volunteers, but on top of volunteers, yep. you also still have funds for like, um, I don't know, the place, the rent, the, the, um, the logistical things, perhaps electricity. Right. Uh, how right. do you that's manage logical. that? Exactly. That's, that's interesting. Interesting question. Because, yeah. you know, in the first uh, four years, actually, mm -hmm. we are not really relying on, on donations. Mm -hmm. that, that's it's a bit unique from my yeah. Because I was thinking that, Many foundations in Indonesia, they are relying on donation on something that that's actually unpredictable, on okay. uncontrollable, something yeah, yeah. uncontrollable. We cannot, you know, control about the yep. amount of donation, right? Yes, that's right. So I was thinking that why don't we create our own business, which is within our control, right? Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, uh, we just created what we call as Indonesia Youth Social Planner. Mm -hmm. okay. So we gather all the college school, uh, college students, and I just say that, hey, you guys already, you know, learn about a theoretical about business in your school, in your college. Jeez. Why don't you practice? practice in, in, our, in, in our entities, in our Indonesia Social Okay. So we create a group and also we challenge them to create a product at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 100% okay. profit coming to Machil. So that, that's, that's pretty much yeah. the... Uh, what can, yeah. So what kind of business that have been turned to reality? In the first four years, we focus on F&B. We create our own product like Makaro Chill. Makaro Chill stands for like mata, Makaroni, Matahari Kecil. Mm -hmm. ah. So a lot of, lot of you know, F&B yeah, yeah. product. But yeah. we started from that. Yeah. Even though the, the, the income is not really you know, big, right? but actually like over uh, four, uh, within four years, we just secure about 100% cost actually. We are only wow. rely on... Uh, social partnership program yeah, in the, our first years, uh, our first years. But then again, uh, times, uh, you know, days become day, beca days become month, month become years. Mm -hmm. And also after four years, our operation getting bigger. Mm -hmm. So we not can rely on the social partnership program only, but we have to, you know, open other revenue stream. Yeah. So we opened the CSR in our fourth years, actually. Ah, so you only open nice. CSR yeah. in the fourth year, exactly. yeah. which basically is a good idea because then you already have a portfolio to sell to exactly. CRR programs yeah. and it's been sustainable so far. Ah, amazing, I yeah, like that. That's real amazing. Great and, um, initiative. Yeah, I also read that you um, empower the parents, not just, not just the children. So mm -hmm. can you elaborate more about this? Yes, right. Um, actually, this is started in 2018 when we already graduated our first batch of students, right? Mm -hmm. This is a three years program. Yep. After they graduate, they want to continue their education to uh, senior high school, right? Yeah. So 100%, they cannot continue their education to oh. general high school, to senior high school. Why? Because they don't have money. Yeah, they yeah. have to buy shoes, they have, they need like transportation costs and so yeah. on, right? Yeah. So the idea is that the root cost not coming from the kids, mm. but actually coming from the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you're willing to, you know, so really solving the problem, yeah. so yeah. We, we have to go there. We have okay. to solve the family issue as well. Yeah. So that's also part of my thesis, actually. I spent mm -hmm. like over uh, a year <laughs> to understand how to solve this problem, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. right? So I talk like, you know, uh, with family, I did research directly, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. With, with teams, and we come up with, hey, uh, we want to help you yeah. uh, by providing like business incubator program, so ah, six month program. Yeah. So we give them like, um, you know, the um, um, capitals mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to create a business, yep. to expand their business as well. Yep. So we, we teach them about the marketing, you know, about the how to expand their distribution yeah, mm -hmm. yep. and so on. Yeah. So we give them capital. We also having like, you know, the intensive um, business incubator program. So not only uh, you know saying that, hey we will increase your income no but actually we want to give them like security skill, yeah. Yeah. Not, not security. skills and security is exactly. yeah. because if we if we give them like security they don't even care about the education mm. that's true Maslow theory they yeah. they really yeah, care yeah, about yeah, the yeah, needs yeah. right yeah. Yeah, 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 they yeah, don't yeah. even care about the yeah. you know about Stop the education, education yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah 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 Maslow hierarchy so <laughs> Maslow hierarchy exactly so we say to the parents that, okay we will help you to, you know, to uh, run your business, yeah. right? So we give you a capital, right? And, but you have to allow me to give a permission to the kids to have an education in our schools. So, so that's that, the idea. Was, uh, that was the condition. So we will right. help you, we will empower you to have a sustainable security, you know, the basic needs. And you will, you know, in, in return, you will make sure that the kids will go to the next step. Yes, ah, yes. Really exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what it. are the challenges, if you may, um, that you've encountered, not just in educating the children, but also in empowering the parents? Mm -hmm. Because I know that these are two completely different things, yeah, exactly. even though they're correlated. Or correlated but um, what were the challenges uh, specifically when you were educating these kids? Was there a motivational issue? You know these things because they had different priorities in mind, knowing that their basic needs were not yep. met. Right, right. So especially when we talk about uh, the characters mm -hmm. and attitude, mm -hmm. there's something that's really I would say like really something that really want to really focus on. 
in our yeah. you know three years programs. Yep. Because when we say about skills, knowledge, right? Yeah, knowledge is power, but character is more actually, yeah. right? The yes. Attitude is something. Character is wisdom. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, that's a bit tricky because uh, in our uh, first schools, actually, um, you know, a lot of um, you know neighbors not really you know um, agree. Why you you have to create schools over here? So we want to comfortably living in our place and so on and so forth, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the idea is that uh, we believe that um, through education, we can you know, help uh, to them to create and also to improve their uh, yeah. behavior, their attitude. That, mm -hmm. That's really important things. Yeah. And we've seen that over three years, after three years program, the attitude and also the character is really, really improved. That's wow. something that we've seen that, wow, this is, yeah. as you mentioned before, that yeah. education is the most yeah. powerful weapon. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's exactly, I, yeah. I've seen with my eyes directly, uh, okay. This is a yeah, really yeah. strong weapon, actually. And yeah. just like uh, what we talked about before, before uh, coming to the show, right? The quality is more important than quantity. That's right. And uh, yeah. talking about that, how do you see the potential of Matahari Kecil students as it has been established for around eight years, right? Yeah, right. Um, so I would say like every kid, especially not only Matahari Kecil, mm -hmm. we have like really big potential. So it's, it's proven like one of the, our kids, um, this is our first batch of yeah. students actually, mm -hmm. Uh, they won the competition about speech competitions. Mm -hmm. they, they they won um, the first winner actually, mm -hmm. and we don't know about at the time we d we didn't know about the what was the give or what what was the um, you know the uh, uh, the the rewards. Yeah. So after that, one of the you know uh, uh, one of the um, uh, other entity called me that hey I said do you know what what the reward of the competitions I don't know. So Rehan, which is our students, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he must have go to Japan about seven days. Wow! And, and, cool. and, and, and yeah. the unique things, uh -huh. when you go to the parents, uh -huh. hey ma'am, your kids able to go to Japan. And you know what they say? They just say that, I just need the money. Just give the money, oh. I need to eat right now. <sighs> That's very ah, simple, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 but yeah. you know, over the time, uh, you know, our PR because at the time we already, you know, uh, settled about the our community. We have like uh, other department, what we yes, call yes. Us, uh, you know, public relation or yeah. relation. Also, slowly but sure, making sure and also encourage the parents. Yeah. Hey, this is a really potential. If your yeah. kids, this is yeah. you know, you know, one in a million opportunity, yeah. right? Yeah. So after that, Rehan able to go to Japan yeah. about seven days, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Uh, one of the you know um, uh, delegation from the Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And not un un until that, after Rehan back to Indonesia, a month after, mm -hmm. right? One of the you know Hamam, uh, what of one of the uh, mayor of Hamamitsu, Hamamatsu City from Japan also mm -hmm. called me that, hey yes sir, we really want to visit your um, schools actually next month. Nice. And that's, that's surprisingly, cool. you know, yeah. there are like three buses coming to our place, Yay. and I was like. <laughs> Well, that's that's a lot of. I mean, yeah. when you want to talk about CSR portfolio, yeah. that's it. These stories matter. But you you mentioned something really interesting, right? Um, how hard is it to empower parents who prioritize um, mm -hmm. still the basic needs over the yep. children? You just yep. mentioned now how challenging it is to convince the parents to see that this is a very good opportunity yep. for Rehan. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what was because it's like a constant negotiation. Yeah. Like you had to come in and negotiate and come in with a win-win solution. <laughs> what was the solution for that? Uh, and I know this n must not be the only case in existence. Yep. Exactly. And that's exactly uh, one of the biggest problem when you focus on Indonesia. That that's that's a really big use case actually. The big uses. So that's why when we want to come to uh, you know the parents, yeah. we have what we call as home visit. Mm -hmm. So not really directly say, hey, mom, we have like this solution and mm -hmm. do you want to mm -hmm. join this program? No. Yeah. We spend like, you know, what we call a silaturahmi in the first month, in the second ah. month. We talk, you know, heart by heart, right? So we do research first in the first uh, month. Like or even building a relationship first exactly. with them so they can trust okay. you. Exactly. Right. Trust is really important. So do you do, do you do research with the families on every children that go to your school or is it just specific? Because in case of Rehan, right, yeah. you would have had to have a you come into the house and that would be a solution then and there. That, because you cannot wait a month yeah, to tell yeah, the, right, the, yeah. the people right, like exactly. yeah. Rehan fly or not, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, so I know I understand this is also a very interesting place to do a lot of research because uh, research that you know can impact society yeah. for real. How does it work? Do you, re uh, do you, because you said you focus on both the parents and the kids. So does that also include you know, this approach to the parents of all the children? 
Yeah, uh, in the first place, we have data. Yeah. So we're working closely with headmaster of school as well, because yeah. I mentioned before that we're working closely with the headmaster of Sekolah Terbuka, Miss mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, Galuh, actually. Yeah. Um, so actually, uh, we have the data, and in data, we have like, you know, the occupation from the parents, we have like mm -hmm. the number of income and everything yeah. and so on, right? So that's, that's really the, the basic um, data. And we, in every, uh, you know, parents, every kids, we do like a visit for all um, uh, students, actually. Yeah. That's in the first year of the um, you know um, 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 uh, schools periods where we do home visit every school period. Mm -hmm. So we know to okay. understand who will be you know who will be the, the beneficiary for these years. Yeah. Okay. So it's more like you know uh, they are like uh, you know we have like certain of um, you know a requirement oh, so. regulations. Yeah. So, right, so. so from thirteen, wow. my curiosity, from thirteen kids in twenty fifteen, right? How many has it come to? How many applicants do you get, and how much quota do you have every single year to accept? Right. So yeah, I think we can we can open the um, one pager from the background uh, as well. So I already prepared the data as well. So okay. but the idea ah, is there it is. Ah, here it is. There it is. Yeah, this is this is the answer actually. Yeah. yeah. If you take a look on this graph actually, yeah. right? Yeah. Thirteen. For from from yeah, 2015 until um, two two years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the increase in the number of the students. Currently, we have like 191. This is uh, this is two years ago, okay. and currently over at 200 something. Okay. Right. Wow. So actually, in terms of the numbers, it's actually growing. That's yeah, 166 percent. That's very significant. Exactly. But the thing is that I wouldn't say that's one of the achievement, yeah. but means that a lot of students drop out here, even in big city. Uh -huh. Because uh, every year there are still our yeah, students yeah, yeah, yeah. and increase actually means that there are still student dropout even in big city. So it means yep. that uh, I understand junior high school is a three year program. So there are students who come in also in the second year, in the third year, um, or just every student that is there starts from the first year. It's supposed to be in the first year because we are using like a formal education. Mm -hmm. um, you like know, you have the curriculum, regulation. right? We have a yeah, curriculum. So we are using like yeah. 2013. So the children program. cannot just jump in in the middle of the Correct. Yeah, program. Oh, and um, yeah. Yeah. maybe uh, one last question from me. Do you have a unique story with the students? Like yeah. One really interesting story. Right. <laughs> this is something I always remember that in 2015 when I was, I, always, I, I do teach as well mm -hmm. there. I teach like math as well as English language at the time. Ah, okay. So in the middle of the you know, learning process, one of the, our kids, um, he just stand up and also he just scream out of a class and he oh. scream like, Mang baso beli satu. <laughs> in the middle of the class. And you know, the baso seller just come to school, so like, siapa lagi yang mau beli? And you were in there and teaching in front of the class. Exactly. That's my first, you know, unique story. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. there's something that shows show us that, you know, um, their our kids are actually having that kind of attitude, right? In the yeah. first year. Uh, so those kind of attitude they have to dealing with, yeah, right? You can yeah, imagine yeah, that this yeah, kind yeah. of yeah. Yeah, like that they um, they need time to be disciplined, right? right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine. Well, you know, Yasa, thank you so much for sharing the yes, story. Thank and you so I want to wish you all the success and yes. hopefully to a more bigger foundation and bigger capacity okay, because I hope, I yep. sincerely hope, you know, the, in the ideal world, the number of applicants should decrease as dropouts decrease. Yep. But yep. until then, I hope that your organization will grow to have a house for those. Amen to that. All the best for Matahari Kachil. Thank you all very much. Best. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for coming here. We've loved sharing so many stories. Yep. And we'll also be right back with you with a dose of entertainment on the last segment of the show. You don't want to miss that on the very new show on C Today. So thank you so much for coming. <laughs>